money from their lobbyists or front groups are going to demand that they make these changes. They'll make it voluntary. That was what Obama was good at, smiling, waving, shooting a basketball, and getting everyone to say, isn't he nice? He looks so presidential. Yeah, well, he just gave all the industries an out. Make it voluntary, but act like you did something. He didn't. No one did anything good in the last five administrations concerning the environment. So what we have is we're not changing. Fossil fuels have been the engine driving manufacturing and the quality of life that is taken for granted in developed nations. So to change this paradigm, you're going to have to change the way we look at politics, of financing, who's going to pay for all this, and who's willing to make the changes. Now the facts are crystal clear. The past several years have taught us that perpetual drought and more frequent wildfires in the Pacific coastal and northwestern states are here to stay. In your lifetimes, you'll never go back to normal. Southern states have been battered by Category 4 and higher hurricanes. All the science points to more extreme weather events and conditions as the planet's surface warms. It's very likely that another Category 5 superstorm this year or next year result in the largest human migration in modern American history. Following hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Michael, homeowners are realizing their insurance is not covering what they believed they were paying for. I can tell you because my insurance company, where I paid my premiums for 24 years, and the only time I asked them to cover damage from the last hurricane, they offered me 3%. That's it. Take it or leave it. Well, I said, no, I'm not going to take it, I'm not leaving it, and now we're in court over it. So you have to understand that the insurance company is not there to protect you. They're there to make a profit, and they're going to do everything they can to diminish how much you get. And you have to look at your policies, because if you're covered for hurricane but not water damage, when your roof is blown off and hundreds of thousands of gallons of water saturate your house, none of that is covered. People are not aware of their own policies. As a result, millions of people are now facing financial ruin, and the only asset they had was the investment in their homes, and now that's plummeting. So insurance companies are going to stop insuring, and where they have to, they're going to raise the premiums, and people are going to be impacted, and they're going to have to move. Unfortunately, we are not making any effort to help the average person. We're not preventing anything. My greatest disappointment has been observing the U.S. regress into the most self-absorbed, narcissistic, and selfish citizenry on the planet. There are always exceptions, absolutely, but they seem to be progressively becoming a minority. Poe after poe indicates that concerns about climate change pale in comparison to the desires for economic growth and national security from imaginary terrorists. After almost 50 years of counseling people about their health conditions, even after heart attacks and strokes and cancer, and providing the best advice I can based on quality, hard scientific evidence, I watched People continue to resist making fundamental changes even when their lives depend upon it. So even as sea levels rise and superstorms worsen, people will continue to rebuild along coastal regions while believing they are entitled to a pleasant climate and a normal life. Deep down, I believe they understand the laws of cause and effect, that there are consequences to unchecked growth that no one can get something for nothing. But most people secretly believe they're going to be the exception to the rule. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates that there are approximately 61 million Americans in the professional class. Now, this is a substantial increase over my last numbers, and these are actually new numbers just yesterday. That will include engineers and higher management, architects and physicians and computer and IT specialists and psychologists and diverse scientists and and researchers and academics and clergy, etc. 
And according to some wealth analysis, this includes close to 11 million millionaires as of 2017. Over 90% of millionaires are married with families. Taking into account family size, this means then that where my old figures were 112 million very wealthy or constantly consuming people, we're now up to 181 million people. So forget the 1%. We're dealing with 181 million. That's over 50% of the American population, including 33 million living in ridiculous wealth. The latter group considers themselves among the privileged elite. To understand the economic obstacles thwarting any viable climate change initiative, we can ask a simple question. Who amongst this privileged elite will agree to downsize their lifestyle to help reverse human greenhouse emissions and preserve the environment? The United States has never been before so polarized into two economic classes competing with each other. The professional careerists who are highly educated, work hard, and carry enormous debt exist in sharp contrast to the remainder of the nation that struggles to make ends meet, living from paycheck to paycheck. Having participated in or organized and led dozens of demonstrations over the years, I've noticed that it is the average working person who will go to the streets and protest. Rarely have I ever seen the professional class, with some exceptions certainly none from the rank and file of the wealthy elite. Yet with a future set for more artificial intelligence technologies, and if you don't think that's a problem, oh, it is. It is a big problem. Masterfully done. Edward Bernay could not have duplicated how clever the new people are at marketing. Turn on the television. Turn on the lights. What's the temperature? What's the population of Ottawa? I'm going to travel today. What is the fastest route to get every single thing you could ask? Instantly, it's answered. That's artificial intelligence. That's the soft side. We don't need vacuum cleaners. This little thing runs around the room and picks up hair and dust, etc., and then parks itself and recharges itself. How about that? Why go out and get into a relationship to have sex that you may not like or may be interesting and then it's over? because it was really the bait. Now you got what you didn't plan on. Two strangers looking for the missing part of each other after the sex wears down. Not to worry. We have Ed. Now, how big do you want Ed? You can make me any size. Do you want him to cuddle? He will. Do you want him with a beard? Okay. Or mustache? No. Clean shaven? He's got that. Stubble? Perfect. You want him 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5"? What color do you want him? What's his hair length? What do you want his breath to smell like? Fruit? What do you want? Perfect teeth? Always cuddling? Transhumanism. Yeah. And then you can have Debbie. And this isn't Debbie does Dallas. This is Debbie does anything. Always with a smile and an intellect. What kind of intellect you got, Debbie? Well, I've got the cumulative knowledge of every woman that's ever written a book and ever gave a speech in world history. Therefore, I'm the smartest woman that's ever lived. Not saying a lot for you, but whatever you can talk about, I can do it better. Hmm. Well, that's a challenge. But Debbie and Ed are real manifestations in existence now as we speak. And what about all those chips? There's a big push right now. I'm sure you've seen it about getting your, getting your chip. So this way, you don't have to worry about, old. Oh, I forget my keys. Walk up to a door, your car door, your office door, your home, and it automatically opens. Go to your computer, forget your pass- password, automatically turns on. Everything you need to know. Oh, I forgot a phone number. Mention a person's name, and suddenly the number is there. All you have to do is just have the chip implanted. It's just the size of a seed. Hmm. Okay. That seems harmless enough. Wow, that makes my life convenient. You are aware there's a million other codes that can go into that seed. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. 
So every single thing you're doing in your life, everything you think, everything you feel, everything you eat, it will be reporting back. No, I didn't know that. They didn't sell that part of it. They never do. So just imagine a population has gotten so lazy, expects so many services done for it, that now you expect everything to be done and there's always someone from Silicon Valley providing you with that instant gratification. Now, it may mean you don't have a job anymore, but hey, as long as I've got all this stuff, who cares? More time for porn, right? Oh, you don't need porn anymore, lonely person. No, as long as you can afford one of these transhumans, you've got a companion, and it does whatever you want. Wow, what could possibly go wrong there? How about everything? So what we're seeing today is we're seeing these highly educated people who are now going to be losing their jobs. Here's the irony. Want to know a real bitter irony? Historically, it was the poorest that lost their jobs first, last hired, first fired. Now it's the most highly educated losing their job because now there's higher educated work visas, automation, offshoring. Once economically secure, families are now starting to sink into the ranks of the new poor. Both classes are fully capable of agreeing that the environment is a defining problem that they will agree upon, if not the defining problem of our time. But there is a most a nominal overlap between those capable of making a change and those in whom making a change will have an impact on their surroundings. This realization came home to me recently after a conversation with a prominent Wall Street financial planner. Over the last 30 years, he's counseled over a 1,000 clients in the multi-million dollar class, and he told me something. He said, Gary, something's happening, and boy, is it unusual. I said, what is it? He says, I'm witnessing for the first time in my career people not asking for my advice but rather asking me, will I sell their assets, antiques, designer clothing, jewelry, paintings, art, etc.? I said, why? Because all these people who are earning millions, they're spending every penny of it and more. They need cash. These same wealthy individuals are speculating on un, under unprecedented levels at margins of 100%, meaning they're betting on something and they don't have the money. They're hoping that what they bet on wins so they can use the proceeds to pay down their margin calls. But it doesn't work that way in the real world. They all believe they can beat the system. They watched two big to fell banks bounce back stronger than ever after the 2008 crash that should have killed them. They've seen hedge funds and equity partnerships, the economic parasites of society, creep piles of money out of nothing, enriching their owners beyond their wildest dreams. This hyper-consumption model has become the new American dream, the province of an emerging professional elite that lives off debt in order to maintain a lifestyle that is no longer within their means to sustain. They live artificial lives solely to preserve artificial appearances in an artificially intelligent society that bases itself upon artificial appearances. Private sector debt is astronomical. If the U.S. debt clock is accurate, Americans' total personal debt is $19 trillion. Personal debt. That's $15 trillion in mortgage debt alone. What do you think the value of the property is going to be when you are caught in an area where it's no longer sustainable and you're susceptible to the environment? Try Florida. You're dealing with several trillion dollars in what's going to be a collapsing real estate market and then go right around the United States' borders. 1.5 trillion in student loans, 1 trillion in credit card debt, another trillion, 200 billion in car loan debt. And I'm not even talking about federal debt, state debt, uh, the uh, uh, bond market. I'm not talking about any of these other forms of debt. Altogether, it's 200 trillion. If the United States really cared about the environment, it would also care about its debt. We do not care about our debt. We do not care about sustainable currency holdings, a national effort to migrate or mitigate the worst consequences of climate change, 